a uh, person who called in from a block number uh, with a hand up. Did you have a question? Greetings, Gus. Is this for me? Yes, ma'am. Uh, good evening to you, Gus, Justice, the callers on the line, and to Dr. Wil- is it Wilkinson or Wilkerson? W- Wilderson, like Wilderson, but Wilderson. Oh, Wilderson. Okay. I'm, I do apologize. No problem. Uh, I didn't get to hear the full co- conversation because I was in and out doing other things, but I did know that you were going to be discussing the movie with Antoine Fisher as well as the Halle Berry because we went over that a few times. I read the original book from the before the movie, Antoine Fisher. He wrote his own biography, the book itself. So it the, the movie pretty much followed the book. So I really don't know. Um, I would have to go back to and rewatch the movie because it's been a while since I read the book and I saw the movie, so I'd have to go back and refresh myself before I even touch on that. But the thing with the Halle Berry and the Monsters Ball, and I, I'm in agreement with you when you said that she was used as a sex toy. She was not used as someone with a brain. Because you saw when she came to the house the first time, when his father insulted her and made a comment about he always, you know, went around with black women and it's always good for him to get, you know, to get his groove on or whatever it is with her as if though she was just a toy. She was not going to be around for long. He was just going to use her and then when he could go back and find him another good white woman to settle down with. So, but w- one thing I couldn't quite understand and maybe I need to watch the movie again and maybe y'all could refresh me. Did she ever find out that he was the one there that was at the execution of her husband? Did, did that ever got cleared yes. up in the movie? Yes. And that's, that's probably the most disturbing. That's why Lee Daniels, the black producer, uh, that's how he got the film made. Because, you see, in the second to the last sequence of shot, um, Hank goes, to, goes out to get some ice cream after they've made love. And while she's waiting in the house by herself, she goes to the attic to Sonny's uh, crib, his, his, his bedroom. And she's moving, and she's looking through Sonny's things, and she comes across uh, sketches, portraits of Sonny and Hank. And she realizes that those portraits were drawn by her husband right before she, he was executed. And she starts pounding the bed and crying, like, like she's pounding Hank for murdering her husband. Now, when she comes downstairs and Hank comes in the comes in the door, she's been crying and her face is, is moist and she's she's rageful. And Lee Daniels had the cinematographer shoot her in what we call a a, a mid level or mid a mid close up. So it basically uh, got her from the torso on up, and and her hands were hanging by her side, but her hands were down below the screen, below the shot. Very interesting. I was one time I saw that black bear, and somebody said, um, "Oh shit, she's got a gun." <laughs> now the funny thing about that is that in the first five times the script had been pitched, she did have a gun, and she shot Hank. And this time, when we when we do a wide angle shot and we see her hands, there's nothing in her hands. And they go outside and eat, and, eat, and eat ice cream. But the direct answer to your question is yes. At that moment, upstairs in the attic, she found out that he had killed her hus- her husband. Uh, I want to get the next person that called in, but I want to just add a Dr. Francis Cress Welsing moment, author of the ISIS Papers. I believe, if memory serves, they were eating chocolate ice cream. That's right. I, yep. Yep. <laughs> I thought so. Uh, um. I am almost speechless. I am almost speechless. Um, the only two things I can get out is that we just spent about a week discussing the work of Lee Daniels. We were looking at Shadow Boxer with Cuba Gooding Jr. Um, for those who don't know this film, Cuba Gooding Jr., black male, is in a sexual relationship with his white stepmother who killed his black father in front of him when he was six years old. That's Lee Daniels, Shadow Boxer, 2005. Uh, incidentally, his Cuba Gooding Jr.'s father also abused and killed his black mother. That's uh, Shadow Why Boxer. 
<laughs> Shadow Boxer 2005. This same man also brought us Precious. Um, <laughs> what, what is what is your line again? Police brutality, just like the mutilation of black bodies in cinema, is absolutely necessary for the mental, psychological, the unconscious coherence of the rest of the world. Professor Frank B. Wilderson III. Uh, my last question, I'm going to have to chunk all this down to one because I do want to give folks an opportunity to ask questions uh, before 7.09. Um, given that statement, if it's true, and I, I certainly believe that it is, um, it should be no surprise to anyone who understands the environment in which we live Monsters Ball, Last King of Sc uh, Last King of Scotland, Training Day, Green Mile, Pulp Fiction, uh, Hustle and Flow, Driving Miss Daisy. Uh, I would even say uh, Colored Museum by George C. Wolfe. It should be no surprise why these films are so popular, celebrated, uh, why they're played over and over again. Totally degrading images of black people. Um, I would say all of them, really. I would say it would probably be a struggle to find a film where you do not see some representation of, of anti-blackness, this degradation of black life. 